Okay, let's see how that is. Nice, that'll do. Let me just double check that sound is working and that my fan is not activating the microphone. Swap over here. All right, sound appears to be working. Just fine. And the camera appears to be in focus. Perfect. All right. Just grab some paint and we will we'll get started. Let's see here. All right, so today I'm going to be painting the Lady of Vines from the Echoes of Doom set. Uh, unfortunately, I got my set a little bit later. It was delayed coming from Games Workshop. Uh, I did not get it for free or anything. I paid for it, um, but it was just delayed in shipping. Um, so yeah, uh, the only thing I've done, I primed her. Well, I built her, obviously. I primed her in Chaos Black spray, then Xenithal from above with Wraithbone. And then the only other thing I did is took some cork and put it uh, around the base here with a little stream going through the middle. Um, I put a little bit of texture paint at the bottom of that stream. And then I put some little cork rocks there. That's just to match the rest of my Sylvaneth. Um, and we'll be matching the paint scheme of her to them. So, first things first, I'm going to start with Wildwood. Kind of a given for, uh, for Sylvaneth here. And this is just going to be the color of... Well, her, I guess. Um, so, I'm just gonna just trying to pick a place to start. I'm just gonna start down here, I think. Um, she has, like all Sylvaneth have, a um, pretty good amount of texture on her. So you don't have to be too worried about your contrast paint globbing up or anything, or looking splotchy on her. But it's still a good idea to. Uh, just work in pretty big strokes when you're doing the bigger, flatter, or smoother panels on her, um, as with all Sylvaneth. And you want to not leave it sitting in any one spot for too long without finishing that area. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So, for instance, right here where we have this line that we, we want to finish this whole panel before we uh, move on. Otherwise, you'll come lay down a second coat or you'll just finish that panel later, and there'll be a nasty line running through uh, running through the wood there. And on wood, maybe it's not the end of the world. You know, maybe you could play it off as wood grain or something. But typically, you just want to finish each cylinder, in this case, in one go. Um, the other thing to keep in mind for Sylvaneth models that can be kind of confusing sometimes is uh, where do like where does the wood begin or where does the brown begin and the green end or where does the green end and the brown begin that sort of thing. Um, you just kind of have to play it by feel to be honest. Just kind of whatever looks right um, and I guess sort of with any living trees as well you you know eventually going down a branch you just sort of transition from bark to kind of new green material and then to leaves right so it's really just up to you uh, i'm going to be doing a pretty simple method here where most of it will be brown then we will go back with some contrast green for the leaves and stuff and then cheat it with some uh, layer of green to kind of sort of blend it in but not really blend it in like I said, I'm gonna gonna kind of cheat it so it from afar it will look sort of like it's blended in, but really we're just using two colors next to each other. Um, the other great thing about Sylvaneth is when you get the the wood part done, so this uh, this wild wood here, you've you've got so much of the model technically finished. I mean, you really just need a color on them. 
and uh, you're good to go. I'm going to do a little bit more than just a color, but in terms of when you could stop, you're, uh, you're pretty close. So I'm going to leave that, uh, that part in there. I'm going to leave that to be not... Uh, I'm going to put do green in there. Sorry, I was just looking at my reference image here that I had pulled up. I'm going to leave that to be green, so I won't put brown in there for now. And uh, when you're doing things like skinny bits like this with all this overhang, um, and by overhang I just mean that if you were to you know, come at this thing, at this arm here, and then keep going. There's stuff under it. You just want to be making sure not to flick your brush off the end of these things, um, because it will flick paint onto the rest of the model where you don't necessarily want it. Just something to keep in mind as you're applying this contrast. And if I get a little bit of brown on these shoulder panels here, that's fine, because they're going to be gold. Uh, and we do not do gold. I mean, you can do gold with contrast paint. Um, I am not going to do gold with contrast paint, though. I'm going to do gold with gold paint. True metallic gold paint. The spear I'm trying to keep off, off of as much as possible. We're going to do that in a light blue contrast, and... Light blue does not cover over dark brown very well, as you might imagine. If we do make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. I can touch it up with some white or some more wraith bone or whatever, but uh, I'd prefer to make as few mistakes as possible here. So up here on her head, this is one of those spots where you have to kind of decide where the transition is going to be. I'm just going to basically be doing the transition straight at the top of her head where the branches start coming out. Uh, but you can make the decision on that and, uh, you know, decide how far you want to go with blending them together. I'm perfectly happy with just putting them next to each other and calling it a day. Uh, but you may wish to take it further, which is absolutely fine. Also, Sylvaneth is not really a main army for me. I don't even have 2,000 points worth of Sylvaneth. They're just kind of a side project. So, um, I'm not, not super concerned with, with that. And then, so on these, the ends here, I'm just kind of going, you know, partially, partially up until I think I've gone a good distance. Like I said, we'll come back and cheat it a little with some layer paint after we put the green contrast on. And you could do something that I've done in previous videos, which is sort of wet blending with the contrast paint. And I may show you that on one of these, uh, on one of these tendrils here, just to show off the technique. It's super easy. You just get your second contrast paint out, and while your first one is still wet, you just kind of smash them into each other until you get a Sort of a blend between the two. It's not a not true wet blending. I mean, it is. Your paints are wet and you're blending them together, but typically true wet blending, you'd go back and forth a lot more and you'd mix them in a lot better and that sort of stuff. Gorthor Brown. Yes, there will be Gorthor Brown later. Don't worry. All Sylvaneth deserve Gorthor Brown. All models deserve Gorthor Brown, for sure. And uh, that will be the highlight color for our brown, so fear not, dear citizen. It will be Gorthor Brown. So yeah, all these parts where, you know, you have leaves on the end of these mm -hmm. and then transitioning to a thinner branch and then to a thicker branch you just have to decide where your brown's going to start on there or end in this case and thankfully because you know it's like a giant angry tree coming at you they don't all have to be the same you know some of her limbs might be 
longer, some might be shorter, some might be older, some might be newer. Oh, I didn't paint the other side of this branch. Um, so you don't have to, it's not like a space marine where typically you're looking for uniformity. Just kind of go with the flow and see what happens. Get the other side of this vine here. Oh, I see another spot I missed in here, in the back of her shoulder, or armpit or something. A little bit down there. Oh, some little bits down here, too. Oh, some little bits down here. It's here. Good grief. I think this is my first time painting. Get some down here. All right. That looks good. Oh, did we get the other side of this leg? Yeah. Okay. There we go. All right, so now we're going to take our next color, which is Militarum Green, right there. And we're just going to paint this in on all the leafy bits around the miniature. Um, and some of this will be next to this brown, which is still a little bit wet. And so we'll do a little bit of that blend that I was talking about earlier. And there you can see it's not true wet blending, but you kind of have a little bit of a transition between the brown and the green. And then, as I said, we'll cheat it later with a layer paint. So I'm just going to do all this stuff and get these leaves over here. These leaves down here. And uh, the other thing I did, so I'm going to go on a little bit of a tangent here. True Xenophil um is from a single direction uh typically unless maybe you're on tatooine or something but even then they were kind of in the same direction um typically you have a light source from a direction there's one sun in the sky that sort of thing sometimes obviously you do get a situation like maybe in a very bright room or something where you have omnidirectional light but typically you don't um and so i said in the beginning i zenithaled um, this lady, but really I didn't. Zenithal would be put the miniature down, pick a direction, spray from that direction, there's your light source. But what I really did is went around the miniature, spraying from above. Um, and so it's sort of like there's kind of generalized shadows and generalized light. That's what I'm talking about when I say uh, Zenithal, which again, not technically correct, but that's what I'm meaning. Um, but, but with doing that, Right here is an example. You can see this is technically these two branches. We're looking at them from the same angle, obviously. But one is darker, one is lighter. Um, and that's just kind of picking and choosing where you spray from just to give it a little bit more visual interest uh, when you're going around the miniature. So now from this angle, these two branches won't appear just to be identical branches. Um, they'll have a little bit of difference to them. Which is not, you know, not the biggest of thing, but it's such an easy thing to do before you paint. Just don't spray one of the branches as heavily as the other. And they look different, like one has a little bit of a darker shade to it, so. Something to think about, you can always just, like, not spray a, a patch of in the middle of her, or, like, you could leave the top of or the middle of this thing dark, or anything. You could do all sorts of stuff. Just something to keep in mind. Some super easy things you can do to to break up your zenithal or your your fake zenithal, I guess. Almost painted that bird, and I'd like to paint that bird purple. And the contrast purple, we're going to use the light contrast purple, and it is not going to cover over green, so I'm glad I did it. Just going to get this other vine here. And hopefully, depending on camera battery, I'm going to try to aim to do the base on camera today as well, in the same stream, all at once. We'll see what happens. Not sure exactly how long this lady's going to take to paint. Should be pretty simple, I think. I don't have too many colors planned, but uh, we'll see. As always, I am bound to whatever the camera battery tells me I am. Alright. 
this lady also, she has so many, uh, so many directions that you need to make sure you look at in order to get everything coated properly. She's got, she's got just twigs and stuff everywhere. All right, I'm going to paint in here now. I think I'm going to punch this spot up either with some, some more green, but for now, that'll do. And then this area here, there's going to be some gold in here, so we don't have to be super messy, or we can be super messy with our transition here. Don't have to worry about it. And then we're going to come back to this color later when we do the base to stick some of our flock on. But I don't want to do that now because it won't dry in time for putting the flock on. All right, so now I'm going to do her her half cape here. I don't actually know what you'd call this. I'm going to call it a half cape, but I think a half cape would still start at your shoulders. This is really like a full-length cape. It just, Or no, I guess it's a half cape that starts at her waist. All right, it's a waist half cape. That's... Trademark that. That's what it'll be. Um, and so I'm going to do this. And this, we are going to do a little bit of that contrast pretend wet blending. As soon as I get the bottom here. Um, we're just going to do it really simply, not, not anything crazy. We are going to use three colors, though, because in my head, if you're blending colors together... And you're trying to get a gradient, you should at least use three. If you're just going from one area to another, then two is obviously fine because you're transitioning from one thing to another. But if you're uh, if you're doing if you want a gradient look, then I think you should always at least go for three. We can call this a successful Operation Market Garden, can we? I guess. I mean, she is she's pretty gardeny, I suppose. I did buy her at a market of sorts. Um, all right, so we're going to use Creed Camo. That's one of our blends. And Warp Lightning is the other. So I'm going to start, start with Warp Lightning. And with our Militarum Green still wet, I'm just going to go in and kind of do this. Just pick out a couple spots here and there. I want to be this color. we go. Now you can see it's already starting to fade in as it kind of percolates out into the Militarum Green. And then we're going to use Creed Camo and do the same thing. Um, the key here is that you don't just want these two things. Like So for instance, down here, I have a patch of Warp Lightning right here. I don't just want to like go over here and put Creed Camo so that we have like just splotches. We want the second color to touch both our other colors. And that'll really help the blend look like it's uh, just kind of a modeled pattern on here, not just, I put a splotch of light green here and a splotch of dark green over here. So on and so forth. Alright, so there's our there's our super simple blend that we did there. Once that dries, it'll look A1. Um, I could do it on the underneath part, but honestly, I'm not going to because you're never going to see it. She's going to be sitting on the board like this. Best case scenario, you're going to see her like that. You're never going to see under there. Not worth my time. So, next, we're going to go on to Aethermatic Blue. And we're going to do this on the staff. Spear. She's a wizard, right? So it's a staff. Maybe it's a spear staff. I'll have to look at her profile. Because she's a wizard, but if she has a stabbing profile, or like the spear of the wildwood or something on her profile, then... I don't know, maybe it transforms. Maybe it's a spear sometimes and a staff others. I could be down for that. Right now it's a spear. So we're going to paint it as a spear. Although, if it was a staff right now, we'd be painting it the same way. So, fair enough. But, yeah. Aethermatic blue. That's what we're doing. This is uh, the color I used on my Spite Revenant. Is that what he's called? I think so. Um, so we're going to use this same color. This guy. Whatever this guy's called. It's the same color. So we're going to keep using that color. Um, I think that's actually the only place that we need that right now. We may do a second layer of that. Just because I didn't do the heaviest layer of Wraithbone on uh, this area. 
So we might need a second layer just to punch it up a little bit. Uh, but first, I'm going to grab just some Corax white here. And I'm just going to touch up that bug while I'm thinking about it. I did get a little too aggressive with the brown paint. So I'm just going to... There we go. And uh, this is where people will tell me that I'm a liar when I say that I sprayed things with uh, Wraithbone. This is Corax White, and this is Wraithbone. I promise. I did not spray this person with Corax White. Not that there'd be anything wrong with that. I just, uh, you know, I'm not, like, making up colors that I use. This is Wraithbone. I don't know why it looks so bright on camera. It's just the way it is. So we'll let that a little bit dry there. Uh, and now I'm going to grab some gold. Um, and I'm going to go to my, my signature gold of late. And that's going to be... Necro Gold from Scale 75. It's a great color. We're going to use that. Uh, unfortunately, sketch, yeah. That, that white is pretty sketch, I know. Um, unfortunately, GW doesn't really have an equivalent of this. I like to give equivalents of GW paints, just because I know a lot of people use them. Uh, unfortunately, there isn't really one for this color. But it's just a great color. I encourage you to pick it up. Give it a try. It's great. It's kind of a muted gold, which is why I like it. Especially for um, for things like Sylvaneth. I think muted muted metallics is the uh, star of the show, really. you got to think they live in the woods. They're probably not... Uh, they're not, like, getting polished every day. They live in a dirty environment. So I just think... Uh, a more natural, duller gold is the way to go. Retributor would be too uh, too bright, I think, for Sylvaneth. But, you know, if you have a different uh, picture in your head for your Sylvaneth, by all means, use whichever gold you prefer. This is just one person's opinion. thing I am going to struggle with on this lady is figuring out what all is going to be gold. Um, she's got a bunch of detail on her chest, and I think I might do that in the green that I'm going to come back to later, and not in this gold, which is what I was thinking originally. But she's going to have all this gold up on her head here, so I think that'll be enough, and I think we'll do the other in green. And our green here may be a little too wet to do work with this gold here right now, so we might have to come back to the gold. We'll, uh, we'll do what we can here. And if we run into problems, we'll switch things around. She's got like a gem down here. I guess this is all sort of one thing. I'm not going to paint that whole thing in gold, but I'm going to leave that in green. I like it in green. But this gem is going to become red, and so for now I'm just going to put the gold on it. Also going to get these little things at the end of the rope here. I'm going to get them in gold. Um, and if I didn't mention this in the beginning, I think I did, but well, it's in the description as well. Um, as always, we're just going for battle ready here. We're not going for anything super fancy. Just trying to get the paint on the model. So you can use him, her in this case, uh, in a game. Um, and in this case, so as I said, my Echoes of Doom arrived late. And uh, I'm actually running a tournament tomorrow. And a friend of mine is running, or was planning on running, Lady of Vines in his list. And so one of two things is going to happen. Either, which is what I hope, is he has to suffer the shame of borrowing mine for his list. Or, what unfortunately is more likely, is he's also at home painting his right now. We shall see. But that's why I'm, especially, even though I normally paint Battle Ready, this is a further reason why I'm painting Battle Ready today. So that I can hopefully disgrace uh, my friend who wants to run it in the tournament. Um, Sylvaneth is his main army, so any chance to embarrass him with Sylvaneth. I gotta jump at the chance. 
Unfortunately, he's also a really fast painter, so he'll probably get it done. But at least I'll have this cool model fully painted. And at least I was able to make some content out of it. That's those two things. Get the model done and make a piece of content, I'm happy. If I can embarrass the friend at the same time, that's just icing on the cake. Thanks, Tim. I am uh, I'm pretty happy with it so far. Our gold or our green hair is still a little wet. We probably should move on and do a different spot. But if our gold has a slight green tint to it on Sylvaneth models, not the end of the world. So I'm just going to carry on, and if uh, we get a little mixing, you know, oh well. I actually might even experiment, uh, maybe down on the belt buckle area, I might experiment with uh, using a green wash on this gold to see what that looks like. Because why not, right? It's Sylvaneth. It'd be all about the green. All right, I think think I'll distract him for you. Perfect. Thanks. <laughs> go uh, go tell Landon funny story so he doesn't paint. Uh, are you using contrast paint? Yes, Tim. Uh, everything except this gold that I'm applying right now is contrast paint. Uh, the main color was Wildwood, then Militarum Green on here, uh, Aethermatic Blue on the spear, and then Militarum Green Warp Lightning and Creed Camo to do this sort of blend together thing. Uh, now I'm using Necro Gold from Scale 75, which is not a contrast paint. Obviously, I guess, since it's from Scale 75. Um, I'm just looking now to see if there's anything else. Oh, yes, the rest of this thing needs to be gold. All of the Sylvaneth have their, like, I don't know what it's called. True Sylvaneth fans would know. There's, like, this energy magic item thing, like, woven into their bodies. Um, and she has one as well. I'm just going to get this gem here, which I'll paint red later. But, uh, red, or gold, rather, is a good base color for contrast red. Gives you a nice, nice warm tone, which I think is key for Sylvanet. All right, now we're going to grab that green that I talked about earlier. Uh, although, glancing around my desk, I don't see it. So that's potentially problematic. So, while this dries, we're going to hunt for the green. That's what we're going to do. So I found this green, which I will need later. So keep this in your mind. Auric Flesh, we're going to use this later. But, we need another one first. And, I might have to stand up to find it. Let's see... I did, but I have found it. Here we are. Lauren Forest, a very Sylvaneth color. Oh, Lauren Forest is dead, as GW paints can be prone to do. All right, plan B. Plan B. Plan C. Probably should have planned better before I started my stream, but, you know, shit happens, right? Sorry, YouTube. Didn't mean to curse. Sorry, kids, if you're watching. All right, fine. You know what? We're just going straight to the Auric Flesh. I can't find another green I like right now. Auric Flesh, we're doing it. She'll just be a little lighter than, uh, than normal. Uh... That was nasty looking. Yeah, the uh, the Lauren Forest was uh, hmm, having some separation problems there. We'll have to address that at some point. Uh, have I tried mixing some green into my gold? No, I haven't, but uh, that's a good idea. I could do that to give it sort of a, a greenish tone. Um, that would definitely be a good idea. Um, I didn't... Or I didn't think about that specifically for this one just because I'm trying to do just quick battle-ready, get it done. But um, 
That's definitely a good thing to keep in mind. Uh, you could mix some green into a gold and then paint it on to give your your Sylvaneth gold a uh, nice foresty tone. So I'm just going to use this green to paint in some details here, starting with her chest. This detail is kind of wrapping around her up here. And I may not grab all of the this kind of detail on her, but I'm going to grab some. Let's see where else it takes place. Well, I know that... Now I've lost it. I know there was some... Oh, I was just going to do it on the leaves. That's what I was going to do. So we did it there, and then I'm just going to come find each leaf here. Oh, that was a leaf, but that's fine. And just kind of give it a little bit of this lighter color. And we are going to wash over this, all of the green and all of the brown, in a bit, so to give it a little more punch. But also, um, the way I'm going to do the base, hopefully that gives the miniature some punch as well. So we don't need to focus as heavily on silk, as long as we cover everything and don't have primer showing. It'll hopefully be pretty good. I'm just going to come down and find each leaf again. And uh, the way I'm doing this so, obviously, we're painting a 3D miniature, and so I kind of like to think about on a 3D miniature, everything has four sides. Um, that's kind of the easy way. Even if you're painting a cylinder, like realistically, you're going to look at it forward, from the left, from the right, from the back, whatever. Um, for these leaves, I'm just doing two directions. So, I'm looking at them from the front. Everything that I can see from looking at her at the front, I'm going to paint. And then I'm going to spin her around. Everything I can see on the back, I'm going to paint it there. So there might be a, an angle from the left or the right where a leaf isn't painted. And, you know, that's just the decision I've made for this miniature. And I will, you know, I'll turn the miniature a tiny bit like I did there so I can actually get to that. But mostly I'm just, can I see this thing from the front? Okay, I'll paint it. Can I see it from the back? Okay, I'll paint it. Otherwise, leave it alone. Gonna do a little more here and kind of dry brush over brush all the way on this part here. I might do a little more on the headdress also. Just come down here. Come down here. And then, you know, the more I look at this green on here, the more I think that this was the color I actually wanted in the beginning. So maybe it was fine that the uh, the other colors weren't as prepared for this stream. Because this green is looking. Pretty nice as it dries, it matching up with the military green pretty well. But yeah, maybe on um, just going back to mixing green into my gold. Um, I plan to make a video on the Gossamid archers, and maybe for their, I'm pretty sure they have a little bit of armor on them. For them, maybe I'll try uh, mixing in a little bit of green on the gold. And what I actually might do, rather than mixing it, because I'm not a... I don't usually mix colors. Nothing against it, I just don't usually. Um, what I may do is just paint the gold on, and then while it's still a tiny bit wet, just wash over it with the green so it sort of mixes in. I might do that. Alright, let's see here. Any other leaves I can see from this back angle? Right there. Maybe here. All right, so then we come to this cloak. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a fatter brush. I can't see that. And just get some of this on here. And then I'm just going to start at the top and come down like this. We've still got some of our contrast paint that's a little wet. So we're just going to be a little bit careful, but we're just trying to get this just to catch the edges of these leaves, give them a little more definition. There we go. All right. I'm trying to see if there's anything else that needs to be 
green. Ah, oh, yes, there's a couple of leaves right here. I'm going to do a green in this, and maybe the tip of that, and then over here. Oh, uh, did I do the leaves back here? Yeah, I guess I did. Okay, cool. Great color choice. Looks like she's freshly sprouting those vines. Thanks. Yeah, the um, yeah, the more I look at this color on there, the auric flush, I think this was actually the color I wanted. I had just forgotten which color I had wanted to use, because um, that ended up working pretty well with the uh, Militarum Green there. So now we're going to move on to the color that was mentioned earlier. The greatest color Games Workshop makes, Gorthor Brown. And we're going to highlight the wood with this. So again, with the thicker brush and sort of the same way we just did the cloak, I'm just going to go around, kind of coming down. To give her a little more texture on some things. I'm going to actually look at the reference photo in a second on these claws. I think they're just wood. But uh, I feel like they could also be something else, too. So, yeah, I'm just kind of coming down along these surfaces with this Gortho Brown, or up, up or down. Just giving them a little more texture. And then we're going to come back through with another color also and do the same thing. And this can be heavier, lighter. We're not, uh, we're not being super precious about this. We just want her to have some contrast. And uh, from a couple feet away on the table, she'll have that. Work the, our way up the vines here. Just want to make sure that you get most of the paint off your brush before you do this. You don't want giant splotches of Gorthor Brown on her. Thankfully, um, the contrast we used Wildwood will cover over Gorthor Brown just fine. So if you find that you get a little bit too much somewhere, you can just go back over it. No problemo. Just here for the Gorthor Brown. Well, crap, I should have used it later, so you stick around. Son of a gun. She used it last. And again, just like the leaves, I'm um, just doing two dimensions with this Gorthor Brown. From the front, what can I see? All right, put it on there. From the back, what can I see? All right, put it on there. We'll get a little more in here and a little more in here. All right, now we'll flip her around. There are a couple spots, like right in here, you can see one where I left some primer. Um, we're going to, like I said, we're going to put some wash on her in a minute. So that will, uh, that'll take care of any problems like that. And, you know, once you're done, if you notice some things like that where uh, the wash didn't take care of it, then you can always just go back and touch it up. But for now, the wash should do just fine. And also, just cheat it a little bit, put a little dot of Gorthor Brown in there, call it a day. All right, I'm just gonna glance. Yeah, the, in the reference photo, her talons are just uh, are just more wood, so that's fine. We might accentuate with them with a little bit of uh, blue or something, just to make it look more like one of her weapons. But uh, but otherwise, yeah, they're just uh, just part of the. The wood that her body's made of. A little too much Gortho Brown there. We'll just pull it back down a little bit. And there we go. And then the wash will fix that for us later. All right. So now we're not even going to rinse our brush. We're just going to go straight into the next color, which is going to be Morgast Bone. The camera will focus on it. Anyone else remember the green metallic that GW did back in the day? I certainly do not. Green metallic. Huh. I've always, um, 
had to go to different companies to uh, to find metallic green. That's interesting. Now you know. Now that you say that, I remember there was a hexagon pot that I had that was metallic purple. So I wonder if it was that same era. They also it would make sense that they did some other colors. So yeah, interesting. So we're just taking this Morn Gas Bone and just going over the highest points on her. So her top of her arm here and her talon. And we'll get her face as well. This on this you really want to make sure you don't have a lot of paint on your brush. We're just trying to just kiss the edges here, not go full on coloring anything. A little bit down here. And up here. I think I might have wiped too much off there. Get a little bit more. So we do want we do want some color from this. It's not a lot. And this this lighter color is just to, you know, she is she's probably anyway, she's not a young tree. She's a she is the mother of vines, after all. She's at least old enough to be a mother. So, you know, as uh, as trees age, they do get lighter. Um, and that could be because the bark is starting to wear off or just less pigment um, going into the bark or whatever. I'm not a tree expert, but... Uh, so we'll just give her some, some age. And we might even go in with some white in a couple places, some pure white, and do this. Just to really accentuate it. Um, but now, I'm sticking on the same color, but switching brushes. I'm going to rinse this brush off. Gorthor Brown Down looks good, though. Can't wait to see it tomorrow. I think I convinced Landon for you, so good luck. <laughs> see ya. Uh, Tim, yes, I assume you're saying yes, it was to um, the same time as the metallic purple was the metallic green. I'll have to look into that because um, metallic green is kind of a color I've always gravitated to. One of the first miniatures I ever painted was a a knight on like a jousting knight on horseback from Hat Miniatures, I believe. Um, and I painted him in metallic green. So that'd be cool to get a, a G, but that was like, you know, an apple barrel paint or something, or one of the craft store paints, because I was six or something. Um, but it'd uh, be cool to get a hold of a pot of green metallic paint, or metallic green from back in the day. Uh, so now I'm sticking with the same color, and I'm just going in and painting a couple details. So I did the, uh, the string there, holding the little doodads on. I'm going to do the string on the spear here, and then I did the skull that's embedded in her neck area, and I'm also going to do the skulls that are on her, uh, whatever that thing is called, the, what do we say, the waist half cape, I don't know, whatever we called it earlier, there's skulls in it, so I'm going to do that, just making sure she doesn't have a skull anywhere else, sometimes these Sylvanath like to hide skulls places, aha, uh -huh. she is hiding a skull, <laughs> right there, Oh, come on, camera. You can do it. No, you can't. Right. Right. Come on. Right there. Right there. There's a skull. I'm just going to get that with this color. All right. There we go. And now I'm going to go back to these skulls here. And I'm not going to do perfect coverage on these if they've got a little green tint to them, you know. That's absolutely fine. Everything probably has a little bit of a green tint to it in the woods. This is like an orc skull over here, I think. And then... I'm going to grab some of that pure white again. Korax white, in this case. Or as pure white as GW makes, anyway. And first, I'm going to just sort of overbrush onto this bug here. I'm 
this color. Going for pretty heavy coverage, but not completely covered. Um, and then I'm going to switch brushes back to the fatter one, grab a little bit of this white, wipe most of it off, and then just come in like around her face area. Just do a little bit of this dry brushing that we did with the Gortho Brown and then the Morgas Bone. Just around her teeth and stuff. And this will just, at least in my head, makes her a little scarier looking and uh, gives her a little more presence with this white. We'll just do her claw there. And then maybe like her knees or her thighs around here, down here, maybe a little bit up here, up here, up here, you know, wherever. Do some back here. Just to get different tones mixed into this, the bark. And, you know, if it was not uh, just battle ready, we might go farther. But for this, that'll do just fine. So now, I'm going to go for some Baharoth blue, and I'm just going to do her eyes real quick. I bet those paints are all dried up now. The Citadel, like Citadel typically do, or it'll be like Rocking Horse to get all of them. Um, I actually have some of the old, old Citadel paints, and they're surprisingly durable. Um, they've held up a decent bit. Um, those different, those old pots sometimes hold up, but you're right, sometimes they do just turn to, turn to dust, practically. So I'm just getting her eyes here with the same, uh, or with Baharath Blue, which is sort of the non-contrast version of our Aethermatic that we did on her staff. Which reminds me, I'm going to do another layer of Aethermatic on her staff, just to get it a little more pigmented. Not super concerned with how dark it is, but I do want it a little more than this. So one more layer should be just fine. And then if absolutely necessary, we could come in with some white, highlight it up, and then do another layer of this. But for this paint job, Especially since I still want to do the base before my battery dies. This will do just fine. So then, I'm going to take this Aethermatic Blue and color in this little bug on her back here. Sort of mimicking the the bug on the back of the, uh, the dude here. So we'll do that same color. And then this... Uh, this little bug up here, flying or the dragonfly thing, we're just going to do that in a nice uh, purple, Magos purple in this case. Very, uh, very soft purple. And we might do some more details on this bug at some point, but for right now, we're just going to do Magos purple and call it a day. Alrighty. So then we just have a couple washes to do. I'm going to start with the well, and then the base, of course. We will get to the base. Um, I'm actually, you know, come to think of it, we're going to do the base right now. Uh, because once we get the washes down, she's going to be wet for a while. And if we're putting flock and stuff on the base, it's going to be sticking to her. We don't want that. So the only thing that's wet right now on her is that dragonfly, that dragonfly, and the spear. So that's a good amount of stuff to be wet in terms of putting our flock down. So we're going to... Got to think about the order here because again the flock we're gonna do kind of a strange order typically i would paint the the bed of this river first and then move on to other things but we're not we're going to do the cygor brown first <laughs> top work thanks thanks for stopping by always happy to have you um so i'm gonna paint this this is Cygor Brown. Did I say that? We're using Cygor Brown. And I'm going to paint a, paint the river banks here first, because then we're going to put some flock on it while nothing else is wet. And then it can be drying or doing whatever while we apply all our other paints and we don't have to worry about flock getting in places it shouldn't. So nothing, uh, nothing crazy about this. We're just making sure that this color gets all over these riverbanks here. 
and uh, covers all the primer. And any, if any of the base is sticking out below this cork, I should say this is just a quarter inch cork sheeting. Uh, this came from Amazon, I believe. Uh, so nothing, nothing crazy. You can also get it at Ikea, amusingly. If there's one near you. Um, I'm sure at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, AC Moore, whatever craft store you happen to have near you. I'm sure they can get a hold of cork. So I'm just trying to be careful to not get this on the riverbank. Um, so one thing, I don't know if I already said this or not, I'm actually currently out of the resin I like to use for bases like this, so I'm not going to put any down today. So the quote-unquote finished product today will just be the uh, base painted with flock and tufts and everything, but won't actually have the water on it. And then at some point, I'll get a hold of more of that resin, um, and then in probably just in a random video in the future, I'll just grab her off the shelf once her base is completely done and just say, hey, look, I did finish it. So one day in the future, you'll you'll see this uh, this lady completely finished. But for now, you're going to see her mostly done. All right. So we have this, like, plague bearer here. And I'll be honest, uh, this is a pretty tame sculpted base. I really hate sculpted bases. I probably should have just cut this one off, but I wanted to do, like, the full miniature um, as she comes from GW. But I really don't like sculpted bases. I, uh, it makes me feel like I'm when I'm quote-unquote done with the miniature, I'm not done because I have to go in and paint sculpted base detail. I'd rather just be able to go crazy on the basing. But uh, we're not going to go super crazy on this. I'm going to paint the dirt around this guy, and then we're going to just paint in. He's going to be a uh, Plague Bearer. Plague Bearer Green, or Plague Bearer Flesh, whatever it's called. And we'll call that done. And there's going to be tufts and stuff on here, so you won't really be able to tell what's going on with him. So I'm just going to get the last bits here. You just want to make sure when you're painting cork uh, that the sides are completely saturated. Uh, the cork will absorb this contrast paint, so that can be that can be somewhat of a problem, but uh, it's not usually too big of one. And the top will obviously absorb it as well, not as much as the sides because the sides are much more porous, but um, we're gonna have flock on top of there, so it's not a huge deal. So. I'm going to grab the flock. I'm just going to leave my brush there for two seconds. So, got our flock here. Uh, this is blended turf from Woodland Scenics. Uh, green blend, I should say. And then I'm just going to get any old thing here. I'll get one of these gamer grass. These gamer grass, uh tough things and I'm just gonna let me close this paint we're gonna come back to this paint in a second but I don't want to knock it over I'm just gonna cut the top off this so we have a nice little tray and then I'm gonna take some of this and just put it down in here like this um, and if you have a fan on I do have a fan on but it's very low if you have a fan on near this stuff be warned it will go everywhere I'm just gonna get that like that so then I'm just gonna get some more of this Saigor Brown and saturate the top here of this riverbank. We might have to do this in sections so it doesn't dry. And then we're just going to grab a little bit of this and sprinkle it on like that. And this is just going to stick to the wet contrast paint and not going to stick other places. So your brush will get a little messy here doing this in sections because you'll be painting up to the edge of the flock and some of the flock will be sticking to your brush, but it comes right off, no problem. Just wipe it on a paper towel and you'll be all set. I'm just going to do this whole section here. There we go. Just put my brush to the side. There we go. And so, 
if we had painted the river first, now all this flock would be getting in the river, and it would be a nightmare. So that's why we did it in this order. And now, once we put this flock on, we can just go about our day doing everything else and not have to worry about it. going to try to do this whole section in one here and um, you know typically you shouldn't probably stick uh, flock or stick things down with wet contrast paint you know, paint is not an adhesive but because this flock the pieces of this flock are so small I've found that they'll stick down and they won't let go for anything so I'm just gonna blow this off real quick because we do have some extra But, as you can see, even blowing directly on it, we got some of the excess off, but it's stuck down just fine. So, we're all good there. I'll set this aside and clean this up at a later date, or as soon as we're done here. Um, rinse my brush off. So now, we're going to go back to our Aethermatic Blue for our first color of our river. I'm just going to put this down go all over everything here. And if it goes a little bit up the banks, that's fine. Um, and so, obviously, river or water in general is not just straight blue. Um, you want some different tones in there. But what I usually do is I will just tint my resin slightly brown after painting. Well, when I want it to be like this kind of enchanted magical water that I do with my Sylvaneth, um, I'll just tint my resin a little bit brown by just putting some like Skeleton Horde contrast paint in it or something. Um, and then over the top of this blue... You still get some, some texture and some color in the water, but it looks overall blue. So for this, that's why I'm just going to paint straight blue in here. So once I've got it everywhere, all up to the sides here. There we go. So then, a little bit more in there. Then I'm going to take some Gulliman Blue Glaze which I've talked about this before. Um, if you want to make this, three to one Aethermatic Blue to Talisar Blue. Um, otherwise, just you know, use this. It's not made anymore. That's why I like to give a recipe for, uh, for making it yourself. You can also just use Talisar Blue. It's not exactly the same, but it's sort of, the, sort of similar. Um, so I'm just kind of putting this around just to give our water a couple different hues there. And... Then, just a tiny bit of Sigor Brown on top of each one of these rocks. Just like this. Like that. And these will be almost completely submerged, but they might be sticking up a tiny bit. Um, and so that's why I like to put just a little bit of brown on there. If they do get fully submerged, they'll look fine with the brown. If they don't, then it'll make sense that they're not watercolored when they're not underwater. So now I'm going to use some Plague Bearer Flesh and just going to knock out this Plague Bearer. And then we will start adding some washes to her. So just do this. Being careful of the flock that's on here, you will wipe it off. It's not stuck down the best right now as that contrast paint still sets. But, uh,. You can always put a tuft over it if you make a mistake somewhere. And if a little brown gets blended in with him, it's not a big deal. Because he is uh, he's kind of becoming one with the ground here. So alrighty. So now we can think about some washes on her. So the first one we're going to do is some Beal Tan Green. And we're just going to put this on the leaves. Or the vines or whatever. The green bits. Just like this. And it looks stronger than it is when it goes on. Um, once it once it finished dry. Once it finishes drying. Let's see if I can keep my mouth in line with my brain. Um, it'll 
it will tone down quite a bit. It looks pretty harsh when you put it on originally, but then it tones down and looks pretty good, in my opinion. So just getting this all over the vines. And I just kind of rub it around, as you can see, making sure it's not pooled too much. I'm just trying to tint the surfaces here, not completely cover them, color them, or cover them, I guess. Either one. So then this headdress here. I'm just going to put a little bit of green on the gold here. Just, it's a tiny bit of tint. Just a tiny bit. That. Like that. We are going to put some, some gold wash on here, but just want to get a little bit of green in there just because, you know, it's the Sylvanath. They have green everywhere. And then we get here, this last vine here, and then we're going to flip her over, get the back of this. And then the underside of these vines. And then on this uh, this part back here, we're not going to use it a ton because it'll mess with our blends that we did there. It'll just kind of unify them a little more than we want. Um, get it off there. So what I'm going to do is just down here at the bottom, I'm just going to do this just a little bit, just to make these bottom leaves a little bit darker. There we go. So that will do it for the green. Now we're going to take some Agrax Earthshade, if I know where it is. Well, I had, well, well, okay, well, while I search the desk for the Agrax Earthshade, we'll go for some Reikland Flush Shade in the meantime. Ah, oh, there's the Agrax. All right, well, Reikland Flush Shade for now. And we're just going to put this on the gold. we put this on pretty thin. We don't, uh, I'm going to put it on thicker and then pull it off a little bit. We just want a very, very, very slight reddish tone in these gold panels. Don't want it completely, completely red gold. Just a little hint of it. It'll look pretty good. And then that's going to be completely red in a minute, so we don't have to worry about that. We will put it up here, though. And up here. There we go. All right. So then we're going to go to the Agrax that we couldn't find earlier. Now we have found it. And I'm just going to put this all over her skin. Or as much of most of her skin, anyway. Not going to be super crazy about getting it absolutely everywhere, but just kind of getting it where I can. And over these, uh, over these skulls and over this green on here, not a problem. Um, I'm going to be careful about her face because I want to leave that white that we put on there intact. So I'm just going to very carefully. Like, I don't want to turn that white brown, so just very carefully going over and around it. Same thing with her claws here. I'm going to do it on her arm, but not all the way up her claws. And then get some down here, and if some of this gets onto the green, that's not a problem. It'll just help kind of blend into the transitions into the green. around, get down here, down in there, alrighty, oh and then on this, on these skulls down here, just very lightly, there and then just on this stuff right in here give that a little tint all right 
So we are very close to being done here. I'm just going to check my camera battery. Oh, we're good. Plenty of battery left. We will definitely get to the base and be able to finish the base. So I'm going to grab some red, uh, Blood Angels red in this case. And I'm just going to do the gems on her in this. She's got three gems, I think. Yep, one down here. I'm just going to do this light. I don't want uh, complete coverage. I, well, I do want complete area coverage. I don't want completely saturated coverage. I don't want to just have this be completely red, but red tinted with still a little bit of gold shining through is what I'm looking for. There we go. So that's that. I don't think she has any more on her. I'm just double checking though. Nope. Okay. Then I'm going to do the Plague Bearer's eye in this color. Just like that. And then I'm just going to just gonna kind of pick colors at random here to do this Plague Bearer. So we'll go back to Sigor Brown. And we'll do the inside of his mouth in this color. There we go. And then some Morgast Bone to do his teeth. That'll do. And that's good enough for base decoration. Um, but now, for our battle-ready Lady of Vines, she's good to go. So let's do the base. Not really much more to do with the base other than add some tufts. So that's what we're going to do. I've got a bunch of different tufts here. We're going to go green as the theme, obviously. I'm sure you guys have picked up on that already. I'm just going to grab a bunch of my green tufts here. And we'll just start laying them out. Um, my Sylvaneth are heavily tufted, um, I will say. Some people may not like that look. I think it looks cool. If you don't, I'm sorry. You're welcome to, uh, to disagree with me. And then we're just going to grab a couple lavender flowers there and uh, throw some of them on there. Um, all these tufts are from Gamer's Grass. And, you know, hashtag not sponsored. All that good stuff. So, I'll grab my super glue. My super glue has seen better days. It leaked a little bit, but it still works perfectly fine. So, I'm just going to grab... I'll do this with the other hand. Grab some of this, and normally I would just stick these straight down, but because we're sticking them down onto the uh, onto the flock here, we do need the super glue. So I'm just going to start sticking them down here. Actually, I'm going to put the super glue down first, and then I'll stick the tuft down. And, you know, you just want to kind of spread these out in different colors, in different areas you get what you want. And I typically do one color at a time. You can mix and match if you want and do several colors at once or you know one tuft of each color and then rotate through. I just like to get them pretty random pattern so as much as human beings can achieve randomness. Anyway, Throw that out of here. I want to grab these big kind of bushy ones, so I'm going to do them real quick. Do one there. Right there. And then I think another one over here. You will get some flock kind of stuck to the end of your super glue nozzle. Uh, again, it'll just come right off. No big deal. Stick that down. And I think that'll be good for those. Then this other kind of, or the same sort of style, but this other color. I'm going to put one down here. This tuft needs to stick down a little bit more. There we go. I think I'll put this one right in here. This one has some, some errant hairs, which we'll just have to clean up. But that's no big deal. I'll clean them up over the coming days and weeks as I notice them. It's typically what I do when these things have some, some errant hairs like that. That'll be good for those. Then we're going to get some of these darker ones. I'll just put it, put one there. 
one there, maybe there. Just grab them. I do have to make sure I would leave room for some of these purple flowers, because we do want some of them. Get one more of the dark ones over here. And then maybe one here, one there, one back in here. And you do not have to have like perfect coverage on the bottom of your tufts. Just a dollop of super glue somewhere under them will be good enough to stick them down. Um, and as long as you're not, you know, throwing your miniatures around the room, they're not going to come unstuck. So I'm just going to do a couple more green ones here. Um, let's see, I am running out of room. So one more green one, I guess. There we go. And then we'll do some purple flowers. So let's see, I'll do a purple flower here. There we go. Purple flower there. A small one back here, maybe, if we have a small one. And maybe that'll be good. We'll see. So let's see. Here's a small one for back there. A little bit of a bigger one for right here. And then a medium sized one here. So I like to look to see if you can see the purple flowers or whatever your accent color on your uh, tufts are from any direction. So this is the main angle people are going to see her at. You can see them there. The other angle, you can see them there. And yeah, so I think that's good. I think we've uh, we've nailed it there. So then the last thing I'm going to do is use a different color, this sort of lighter green color. And I'm just going to put two of these. Oh, let me get the flock off the super glue nozzle here. I'm just going to put these in the middle of the river, and they will get covered by the resin. But they'll just be like little water plants, basically. Just do one there and one there. Just gonna get little ones. Pop one right there. And right there. So they'll get covered in the resin, and then they'll be a little underwater or just barely above the water plants. Uh, but now the only thing left to do is paint the base rim. So let's do that real quick. Um, for this, I have just been using for the other Sylvaneth, I just use uh, Black Templar contrast paint. Probably need two layers. But I will do the second layer off camera, because the first layer will take a little while to dry. But, I'll just, uh, just do this. But, that will be it for this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it, whether you watched live or are watching sometime in the future. I appreciate it either way. Um, I will hopefully have a video coming out soon for the Gossamid Archers. Um, but Horus Heresy has, uh, has been announced officially. It's coming. So whenever that stuff gets here, I will be heavily involved in painting that. I'm painting the displaced copy for my local store so that it, we can have a copy out on release day. So I'll be, like I said, I won't have very long to paint that, probably less than two weeks to, uh, to paint that box set up. So I'll be doing a lot of that. I hope to get a fair amount of content around surrounding that box out. Um, but at some point there will be Gossamit Archers and who knows if I just need a break from uh, Horse Heresy, I may just do some Gossamit Archers on stream one day. Who knows? But yeah, there she is, the Lady of Vines. All, uh, all battle ready and ready to kick some butt. Um, like I said, I'll do another layer of black after this first one dries. But for now, again, thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next one.